Well, good morning. What a pleasure and honor it is to be here today, and I am so blessed um, that I received the call to come and share with you today who I am. Today is going to be a little bit different maybe than what you're used to. I thought to myself, what can I do, what can I say, what can I embody today for this center, for this congregation? And I know a lot of you are long followers of religious science in this teaching. And you probably have heard great masters come here and teach you about tithing, about treatment, about who Ernest Holmes is, uh, and all of the great masters of the world. But today I thought, when I got, woke up about 3 o'clock this morning, I've got about three talks with me. And when I woke up at three, the first thing that came to me was, I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I questioned to myself, what is that all about? And what came up for me was love. Love can heal everything that is going on in your life. I'm a woman that, I'm a very adventurous woman. I do many, many things. But most of all, I wanted to share who I am and let the teaching happen after that. Because I can get up here and I can preach all day long, but I want you as individuals to know who I am. To be able to see the essence of the true beauty that lives within me. So with that, I'd like to thank the board, and I'd like to thank the, the trustees and the selection committee for bringing me forth today. I had a lovely journey yesterday. I was able to tour your town. I've never been to Yuma. I was in awe. My sister said to me on the phone, she said, sis, very hot up there, and I said, well, I've been in the snow, I've, shovel, I've shoveled the snow, I've been in Palm Springs, I've been in Hawaii, what difference will Yuma be? And she said, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I brought all the wrong clothes, I have stuff that really sticks to the skin when it gets hot, and I thought, well, that's okay. If it gets too hot, I'll take my jacket off, but I won't take my clothes off, just the jacket. <laughs> so, but it is a joy to be here. And my talk is living life to the fullest. So in knowing that, I thought, OK, let's start off with a slide from Ernest Holmes. So Michelle, man by thinking can bring into his experience whatsoever he desires. If he thinks correctly and becomes a living embodiment of his desire, that's our beloved Ernest Holmes. The pulpit is a little tall, and I'm a little short, but I know good things come in small packages. So if you don't mind, I'm going to kind of float around. Um, when I first heard that, when I came into religious science, I cried like a baby. Because when I first came into religious science, I was wounded. I was carrying a lot of baggage. I was hurting. I was angry. And I had a wall so big that nobody could get through. So when I came into religious science in 1992, I walked into the Center of Spiritual Living in Camarillo, California. And Cynthia St. Clair was my first teacher. So not knowing what religious science was, I was only told, you need to go to this to come to our church. And I thought, well, what kind of a church is it? Never mind, just come. I like the way you think. And I kept saying, OK, is this a synagogue? Is this a cult? Why does this woman keep bugging me? And why does she keep coming to me and telling me I need to go to this church? So one day, Sunday morning, I get up early. And Spirit has a way of changing us and working through us go to church today. So I thought, OK, God, if there's something that I need to hear, 
then let me know it when I walk through the door. And this is how the sermon started. The minister to de decided to do a little something different on her Sunday morning. So Reverend Cynthia started this, and she said to the congregation, today in church I'm going to say a single word, and you are going to help me preach the sermon today. Whatever single word I say, I want you to sing whatever hymn that comes to your mind. So she said, and she shouted out, the cross, and immediately the congregation started singing the old rugged cross. And the pastor hollered out, grace, and the congregation began to sing amazing grace. How sweet is the sound. And then the, cong then the minister said, power. And the congregation started singing this, power in the blood. And then she said, sex. <laughs> and everybody got still, and everybody started looking around, and oh my God, and then they, didn't know, they didn't know what was going on. And in the back of the room, sitting way in the back, this lovely 87 years old woman got up and she started singing precious memories. <laughs> so you can imagine, here's this little redhead walking into a church and I thought, I like this. They got a sense of humor. <laughs> They're not telling me I'm gonna go to hell. But it was an experience and a journey that I can look back on today. And I am so thankful and so grateful that somebody saw something in me to lead me to a religious science. I've studied many, many religions along the way. I studied Catholic. I was going to the Catholic Church and, and got baptized and studying the teaching and stuff. But there was always something missing when I went into the um, com uh, confession box, and he, the priest would I tell him what was going on, and he said, "Go do five Hail Marys, and you're forgiving." Well, it doesn't feel right. He's human as me. He puts his pants on the same way I do, but just didn't feel right. So on my journey, I studied Judaism. I went to the Jewish temple. Um, I've studied Christianity and I was slain in the spirit, if you know what that is. It's just becoming, just really letting go and letting it all go. So I've had the journey of knowing the touch of different religions. But one thing that I learned along the way was the power of prayer. The power of prayer and how that can change your life. I know it's something that I, every day when I get up, whether it's three or five or seven or 10, whatever time I get out of bed, I go right into prayer. Thanking God I'm above the ground one more day. <laughs> Thanking God that there's something for me to do today. So I open my heart and I open my hands and say, take these hands, take who I am, show me where I need to go. Let me be a messenger to touch your life today, whatever that may be. So I've learned that by going into prayer, that no matter what is going on in my life, how big, how tragedy, sickness, whatever it may be, that I can always turn within. The biggest gift that I was giving in religious science that I never knew until I was, hmm, I won't tell you what age, but I was a little bit mature, was that I had a choice. Nobody ever told me. I had a choice, that I could chose a different direction. It was one of the biggest gifts that religious science has ever given me. But most of all, beyond that, when I say living life to the fullest, I took a journey, and I kind of shared a little bit last night with the board and the people that blessed me at dinner. I went to, uh, on a spiritual journey, and I went to the World Parliament of World Religion. I have lots of stories, which I like to take stories and embody them into religious science, because I think it's the way that really touches a life. It's the way that really says, oh my God, she did that. 
I can do that. I can go out there. I can really live my dream. But I was at the World Parliament of World Religion, and we were on a tour. There was uh, Michael Beckwith, Mary Men Morrissey, uh, Kathy Hearn, uh, Carol, uh, Carol, whatever, it doesn't matter, Roger Teal. There was about probably 100 of us all going to meet with the Dalai Lama and the world leaders of the world. Incredible journey. I mean, I was totally blessed. And when I, before I got on the plane, I said, I want a picture of the Dalai Lama. Now, who is this little redhead thing that she's going to get a picture of the Dalai Lama? But I put it out there in the universe. And when I got to New Zealand, they gave us a badge so that everybody knew we were with the world part of, of world religion. And on that badge was my face and the Dalai Lama. <laughs> so something as simple as a photograph can happen when you believe. You set your intention. So when we were on the bus, I got to know the bus driver as we stopped in different location and she had her cigarette. And I used to go, oh, it smells so good. I gave that up, but oh, let me smell it just <laughs> once. But we get talking and I said to her, you know, years ago, my sister bungee jumped in New Zealand. I said, is that anywhere near where we're going? And she said, no, it's about 25 miles north. Now, we're on a tour now, so we're on a time span visiting different places. So she uh, got on the bus and she made an announcement. Would anybody object to going to the original mountain where they bungee jumped? And the whole bus sort of kind of looked around. Reverend Linda wants to bungee jump. Anybody want to go with her? And I went, oh, God. Oh, what did I say? And um, I'm going to take this off, if you don't mind. Um, so we went on that journey. Now, you have to understand one thing I didn't tell you was when I said I wanted to bungee jump, I probably was... 10, maybe 15 years younger when I declared it in the universe. Someday I'm going to bungee jump. Now I'm a little bit older, now I'm a senior citizen, you know, and I'm thinking, what the heck did I say? I mean, oh God, what's going to happen? But I was excited because I love adventure. I love doing things out of the ordinary. So we got there. Now I had no idea what was going to happen. So we go up and 25 people, 50 people around the bus, and they're all, yay, Reverend Linda's going to bungee jump. And I'm going, okay, <laughs> all right, I'll do this. And I walked up to the counter. Now, this is how wonderful God is. And I sign my thing, and I fill out the form, and I put my age, and he goes, well, congratulations. He said, this isn't going to cost you a thing. You're a senior citizen. And I went, oh, okay. So I felt kind of powerful. And then they gave me this T-shirt. I don't like things that are clingy because it you know, shows all the flaws in my body. And I go, do I have to wear that? Yes, if you're going to bungee jump, you've got to wear it. And it doesn't cost you anything. And I went, oh, my God, all these gifts. This is wonderful. And then they said to me, we're going to record it, which I was going to bring. And I left it in the kitchen so you could see it. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just tell them the story. Anyway. If you've ever bungee jumped, it is a journey. So I go out, and you have to walk this plank, like from here to that door, to where they bungee jump. And there's open slots. So as you walk, you're looking down. And you're looking way down. Because it's, I don't know how many dimensions it was, but to me it was like 7,000 feet up in the air. <laughs> So I get there, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking, and these people are just going, they're going, oh, and they fall. And I'm going, oh, okay. Looks kind of easy. I think I can do this, but I'm not sure. Maybe, what was I thinking? And I had this blouse on. Ladies, have you ever worn the blouses where they're kind of way out, and you don't stick them in because you want to hide your belly? That's what I had on. And I'm going, Oh my God, okay, I gotta tuck this in. So now I look like a barrel, because I got all this clothes tucked in my jeans. And I'm thinking, oh, do I really wanna do this? Am I really crazy? What was I thinking? I was 15, 20 years younger. What was, 
Now, okay, calm down. Do a treatment. God's right here. Just be patient. So I step up. Then the guy starts to tie my feet together, and I don't like being tied up. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. And he goes, now wedge yourself out to the edge. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't look down. Look straight ahead. Oh, I can't do this. I said, come with me. No. He says, you got to do it. I said, no, no, I, I can't do this. I, I want to go back there. And he said, Look at all those lovely people rooting you on and home and go, Linda, go, Linda. You can't let them down. And I thought, oh, God, God, please. Oh, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, I could either poop my pants or have a heart attack. <laughs> so I was like, okay, uh, uh, I, I think I can do it. And I go out to the edge. And I looked down. I thought, oh, God, please. Oh, just be with me on this journey. And I put my hands up, and I fell. But when I fell, I jumped. So when I jumped, I went up and down and up and down and up. And I'm going, is this thing going to, how do I stop it? <laughs> so lo and behold, there was a boat underneath, and they, you know, took the ropes off and stuff. Now here, after jumping, being at a high altitude, if you've ever been there, I was dry. I felt like oh, I had cotton in my throat. They bring me to this landing, and then I look, there's 50 stairs or more going up, and I'm, there's no water here. What am I gonna do? You know, I'm over 60, I can't do this. I managed to get to the top, and they had the water waiting for me. But what the gift was, Unbeknown to me, there were people on the bus that said, Reverend Linda, you're incredible. You know, I've always wanted to jump out of a plane, but I've been scared to death. And because of you, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to live the dream. So living life to the fullest to me is living your dream. What is it? What is your dream? What do you say to yourself in the morning when you get up? Do you say, good morning, God? Do you look in the mirror and say, I love you. You are so beautiful. You're a gift to this universe. <laughs> or do you look in the mirror like I used to do when I was drinking in my days and say, I hate you. You're horrible. You're ugly. You'll never amount to anything. So you see where the consciousness has shifted through the years. I always say I love me because I know I'm more than enough. I know that God is using me in ways beyond my imagination. And when I get a call to come do a talk, to do a workshop, I don't question the call. I don't say it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too far. I have flown clear across country to do a talk. I don't ask for pay because I know God's using me and I know the abundance will always be there. I believe that what we think we become. Ernest Holmes says, stay open at the top. Think about that. Do you stay open at the top? Do you ask for guidance? Do you seek love every day? Do you forgive those that have harmed you? Do you let go of control? Do you open up to change? Those are pretty, pretty heavy things, but they're very light. Change is good. When people say to me, we've been doing it this way for 50 years, Linda, and I say, but don't you change your clothes every day? <laughs> I said, change is good. I never liked change, but God showed me how to change. And when I say that, I'll share a story, because I love stories. I teach prosperity classes. They call me many things. They call me the pit bull, because when I put my hands into something and I take a project, I don't let go until it's complete. They call me the prosperity queen. They call me Reverend Love, because that's how I show up. 
But more than that, through the course, I prayed richly every day. Teach me to be a better minister. Teach me to be a better friend. Teach me the wisdom that I can share. Whatever that looks like, whatever challenges, whatever I need to go through, I am open to receive that with no question. So before I really, really embody the true essence of prosperity, I used to pray, dear God, I want to be debt free. Dear God, I just want to release all of the burdens. I just want to know that everything is beautiful. Now in my mind, I thought being debt free was everything was paid in full that I had more than enough to, to survive on. Hmm. God has a sense of humor, <laughs> and I love it. I had made some investments in my life. I had a huge, beautiful home that I built for the ground up, 3,200 square feet, had all the amenities in it, beautiful furniture, was overflowing in wealth, had a table that I paid over 10,000. Now, I'm not saying this to impress you. Okay, I'm just saying, that's where my mindset was in material things. I had some property. I helped two ministers uh, buy a home in my name. They were going to take over the payments, and I was going to transfer it. It never happened. Then I had my original home that I lived in before I built the big home. I call it the big house. <laughs> now, when I was praying to be debt-free, unbeknowing to me, as I said, God has a sense of humor. I lost everything. I lost the home I was living in. I lost the home that I had come from, that I had rented out. And the girls in North Carolina, whoops, never mind, scratch that out. Anyway, <coughs> they didn't pay the bill. They didn't pay the mortgage, so I lost that. <coughs> now, if you ever lost anything in your life, I was like, okay, God, I asked to be debt-free, but not this way. <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? And I was scared to death that I was going to have to live in my car and live on the street. You know, in reality, that wouldn't have happened because I have two lovely sons that would have taken me in, but I didn't want that because I'm a very independent lady. And I cried, and I prayed, and I cried, and I called my mentor. And I said, I need help. And I told her the story, and she said, don't you know you don't pray to be debt free? You pray to be <coughs> abundantly prosperous. And I thought, oh, God. I think I need to go through some training here. <coughs> so I did not visualize living in a car or living on the street. I didn't, wouldn't accept that in my life. I said, no, God has a better plan for me. I know that the perfect place is open for me. I know that the perfect place where I can afford to pay the rent, that everything in it is going to be perfectly whole and complete. And I said that over and over and over and over again. And the fear would come in and I'd say, no, God has a better plan. God has a better plan. I will not live on the street. I will not. Now, I lost everything get a phone call. Reverend Linda, how you doing? Well, you really want to know the truth? You want to know how I really feel, or would you like me to lie to you? She said, no, honey, how do you feel? I said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I'm sick and tired of being broke. Where's your source? What do you mean, where's my source? Where's your source? Who's your source? Did you forget? what we teach, oh my God, I've been hanging on to material things. I've been hanging on to things that are just things, they're just stuff. I forgot who God was. So immediately we went into prayer. Within an hour I got a phone call. Hey Linda, there's a rental over in Leisure Village. It's only 1500 a month. 
and all, everything, all the amenities included, the trash, the water, the cable, the only thing that you have to pay for is your lights. It's security, and I went, really? And I have two months rent that I would like to give to you because of how you've changed my life. I cried. I went down on my knees. I thanked the highest and highest of heaven. I thanked God for everything. And that was a turning point for me. But what the message is in this, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> God will teach you. God will show you the way as well, because he is the way shower. So with me, my journey has been enlightenment. I've learned to love beyond my imagination. Because when I get up in the morning, I put my arms around me, and I say, I'm never alone. Wherever I go, there's not a spot where God is not. And that has been my mantra for a long, long time. When I have had health challenges, I had an x-ray done. I was going through some health challenges, and they took an x-ray of the brain, and they said, there's a spot on the brain. Well, naturally, fear came in, as it would. You're going to die. you got cancer. Oh, my God. Things are going to happen. And what I learned, I immediately went into prayer and said, there's not a spot where God is not. Now, the spot is still there, and they check it about every five years. But I don't visualize it as anything but a spot. There's no energy. There's nothing in it. And I hang on to that spot to remind me when I'm speaking to somebody that just where they are, there's not a spot where God is not. Whatever they're going through, there's not a spot where God is not. Whatever challenges, whatever it is that is within that they want to call forth, God is in that. God is in the person that commits suicide. God is in the person that abuses children. I don't understand it, and I don't have all the answers. But I pray, and I send out love. Because what I've learned is when we share love and we give love, it heals the multitude of sins. And to me, that is the greatest gift that you, as a congregation, and I feel that love the minute I walked in the room, just looking at the individual faces, the commitment and love that you have in this center is powerful, powerful. And I am so honored to receive that love from each and every one of you. Because I see this church, and it was a vision that happened about 5 o'clock this morning, the second time I walked in, I saw a sacred ground. And I saw beautiful music. And I saw people with love coming together. And I didn't just see 50. I saw more, 300, 500, reaching out into the community, feeding the homeless, embracing a motorcycle rider with chains, a person with tattoos. Doesn't matter what the appearance is. That's, that's just a clone of who we are. It's what's in here. So to me, living life to the fullest is being honest, open, and loving. And I don't think I could give you any more than that. I'm a minister that cares. I'll cry with you. I'll laugh with you. I will feel your pain. I will never tell you that I believe in you unless I really believe in you. And I will never tell you I understand what you're going through if I have not walked in your shoes. I come from the Indian tradition, and there's that old saying about walking in the moccasins. I call in all the masters. I have a prayer candle that I light every morning that I didn't bring with me. It's a green candle. Now, there's no magic in that candle, but it's the energy and the love that I put in it and I call in all the abundance of prosperity to come forth in my life so that I can richly give and keep that continuous flow of energy of prosperity flowing in my life that I can touch a life and I can give, whether to a homeless person or a waitress or the clerk behind a hotel desk, to share who I am. Because when we share who we are, 
and the talents and love and gifts that we have, you are blessed beyond your imagination. I have, excuse me, I have found that in my life. I also would ask Michelle to bring up the other slide for me, please, and it's from the Bible. I uh, go back and forth between Ernest Holmes and very, a lot of the masters, but I did turn to the Bible for this. By his mighty power at work within us, he is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask. Now glory be to God. That to me resonated because when we give thanks and we really turn within to whatever you call your God, whether it's Abba, Mother, Father, God, Jesus, the Christ, Ernest Holmes, your mother, your father, your children, whatever you call forth, a prayer is a prayer. And just saying thank you, God, is the most powerful prayer that you can ever say in your life. I learned that when I was in, um, I do a lot of traveling. I've been gifted with um, many, many friends that have traveled with me on my journey, and I have so many talks I can tell you about places I've been and things that I have encountered. But I'll leave that for later. Just if I can leave you one tool. The gift would be love who you have come here to be. Show up. Dress up. And when a negative thought comes in, whatever that may be, know that God is in that thought. And God is calling you forth to be more than you ever thought you could ever be. I'll leave you with that thought. Today when you leave, there is a gift that I will be giving out. Darren and I will be standing in that door. And I also would like to know, before you feed your bellies and before we continue on, could you just give me a raise of hands of how many people will come this afternoon? that would be available, one, two, okay, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, oh, we can get more than that. I've brought 35 pieces of material to give out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I think. Um, I don't know what more that I can tell you. I've been talking quite a bit for a while. One thing I will say when you close your eyes at night before you go to sleep, be grateful for the day and know that tomorrow is gonna to be a brand new baby day. So whatever you're carrying forth when you go to sleep, ask spirits to lift that from your soul so that when you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed, you'll feel vibrating, and you'll feel so much love that you'll shine that light wherever you go. So would you please honor me, and would you please stand? I would like you to repeat something after me. So place your hands on your heart. The words are on the screen, but if you can't see them, repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening. It is happening through my mind, through my body, and all my affairs. I think it. I feel it. I feel it. I believe it. I believe it. I know it. I know it. And I accept it. I accept it. So we are never alone because God is right where we are. We have only to look within at any time because we are inspired, we are guided, we are protected. We are fulfilled by an unlimited power, a power we chose to call God. In deepest gratitude, let us seek to live our lives in such a way that we make use of this great gift every moment of our life. Repeat after me. I go forth this morning as a healing agent of love. I go forth this morning as a healing agent of love. This week my good flows from me and to me. This week my good flows from me and to me. I am always in my perfect place. I am always in my perfect place. My life is magnificent and I am successful. 
My life is magnificent and I am successful. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you feel it? Yes. Then so it is. Then so it is. <laughs> Thank you very much.